Hi there, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. We have our last presentation of the evening. Uh, AWS is on the stage with us. They're going to be demonstrating how to quickly build a chat bot with Amazon Lex. All right, so please welcome to the stage, Alan and Harshal. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, everyone hear me all right? Yes, back there? OK, excellent. Uh, so my name is Harshal Bimpal uh, Khatam, a product manager with Amazon Lex. And uh, joining me today on stage is uh, Alan Kiernan, uh, founder of uh, Cation Consulting. And uh, together, uh, we're going to be walking you through a uh, demonstration of how to build a uh, Lex chatbot. Um, and we'll be using uh, some of the other uh, related technologies. Uh, for example, uh, we'll be covering uh, Amazon uh, Comprehend. We'll be uh, using Amazon Translate. And, and uh, you'll get a, a good look at how you can use all of these technologies together uh, to build an end-to-end -end experience uh, for a chat interface. So uh, with that, uh, let me uh, jump straight into it. So what you see uh, is a, a quick overview of our uh, language services. Uh, you have Amazon Lex, uh, Comprehend, Translate. And uh, these are the services that we'll be using today uh, for our demonstration. Uh, but also, uh, we have Amazon Transcribe and Poly. So Transcribe is a speech-to-text service. And uh, Amazon Poly is a text-to-speech service. Um, in, in, in today's uh, session, we'll be covering uh, Lex, which is a service to build chatbots. Uh, Amazon Comprehend, which is a NLP service, and uh, Translate, uh, which, as the name suggests, converts from one language to the other. So uh, what's uh, Amazon Lex? Uh, uh, it's, it's an end-to-end -end service to cover multiple uh, uh, actions. Uh, you, you can convert speech to text and uh, essentially speech to intent with, with Lex. Uh, we provide you with dialogue management capabilities, so you can uh, go back and forth with the end user and conduct a dialogue. Uh, you can use one-click deployment uh, to uh, deploy uh, Lex chatbots onto a multitude of different platforms, including Facebook Messenger, to Slack, to uh, Twilio SMS. Um, all of this can be done at scale. Uh, we integrate with uh, AWS Lambda natively so that uh, you, can in, uh, you can provide your business logic there. Uh, security is very important, and uh, we provide uh, data encryption at, in transit and at rest. Uh, also, we have uh, analytics uh, to continuously improve your bot. And finally, uh, we have text-to-speech capability with Amazon Poly. So that's, uh, that's a quick, uh, you know, what, what, what Lex is um, uh, for, for you. Uh, some some uh, terminology before we jump into uh, the finer details. Uh, so Lex uses um, intents uh, to build uh, bots. Intents are nothing but goals that you want to achieve. For example, uh, as part of uh, booking a trip, you would want to uh, book a hotel, book a car, uh, make, uh, uh, make flight, uh, book, book flight tickets. So all of these are what account for uh, intents. And uh, as the, the many different ways a user could express these intents are what we call utterances. For example, uh, somebody might say, I want to make a hotel reservation. I want to book a hotel. These are nothing but sample utterances or training data that we use to build a chatbot. And once you've engaged in a, a conversation with the end user, you want to elicit information to fulfill this intent. And those are what we call slots. And finally, you actually fulfill the intent. Um, that is through AWS Lambda, or you could do it on the client side. So that was a quick overview of uh, what uh, Lex does. I want to hand it over to uh, Alan to walk us through the specific demo that uh, Catian Consulting has, has built. Alan. Thank you. Hi, folks. Delighted to be here. So we're going to go through a fairly simple demo as to how we'd build a bot defined for customer services, essentially free travel queries in this case. Um, we always strive, based on A-B testing and based on user feedback, to try and aim for a simple conversation. So if I'm a user, I want to ask a question and get a response immediately and clearly. Um, so with that, I'm going to walk through what a good customer services engagement looks like for us and how simple it should be, and then how we try and mirror that using AI. So if I'm a customer, and whether I'm using social media or phone conversation or person-to-person -person chat interface, 
I want to ask a question, a simple query, and I want to get a simple response. So the agent will respond to that query. But the conversation never stops there. You've seen this yourself. The agent will always ask, did I answer your question correctly? Can I do anything else to assist you? And so we'll do the same thing. We'll prompt for user feedback and understand whether we have responded to the user correctly. And that's a conversation that's repeatable. So oftentimes, you're talking to a rep or you're dealing with a rep via PHP messaging, and you will ask multiple questions. So that's the flow that we're aiming for here. So we keep it simple, we keep it concise. So how do we, how do, we do that with AI? How do we do that with Lex? So again, we'll start with what we refer to as open dialogue, which the goal is ask me anything, and I'll try my best to respond to you. And we model around that. And once we provide that response, once we align that utterance and slots to the required intent, resolve that back-end functionality, be it dynamic functionality or be it a static you know, FAQ type response query, we will prompt the user for that feedback. You know, are you happy with the response you received? Can I do anything else to assist you here? And ideally repeat, so we're not just hang up on the user, we're letting them come back and resolve any number of queries they have. But the, so the end states here will be, we'll, we'll repeat, we'll go through the flow again, or we've resolved and the user is disengaged, happy out. Or the user will require you know, some more assistance on that. So they weren't quite happy with the response received, and we'll bring them into, into some contextually aware guided dialogue. We'll present numerous options in the same sphere of knowledge, and with that, they can further drill down to the, the data they're after. And once again, We've asked and we've received, so we'll, we'll confirm that we've satisfied the user's request. And we'll come back to our three states. We'll have a repeat. They'll do it again because they're happy and they have yet another question. They're resolved and they can move on. Or indeed, they're still not satisfied. And we'll go to this in more detail shortly. If they're still not satisfied, then we'll say, you know what? Maybe we're looking in the wrong area. Let, let's let you help drive the conversation. And we we'll give them some a navigated dialogue so they can start drilling down into themselves. And again, we'll always prompt back for feedback. You know, have we answered the question correctly? If we haven't at that point, it's time for the human to step in. So we'll advise the bot. Now, it's something more complicated on here. We don't quite understand the full picture. Let's let the person to person conversation happen, and then let's learn from that event. Yeah? So. You will, of course, allow for the fact that live demos always work. Let's look at how we actually would build that using Lex. So this is an FAQ style bot. We're dealing with customer queries, you know, one query, one response. In this case, we have a battery of over 100 different potential responses. If we take one example of those, and as Harshal pointed out, we have utterances, we have slots, and we have intents, so three primaries. So we're going to look at baggage. And in the airline business, Questions about baggage can be quite vague. We have five or six, I think, different queries alone to baggage. Think about it. Can I bring my bag in the hold? What's my baggage allowance? How much does my extra baggage cost? And so on and so forth. So we're differentiating each of those into its own set of utterances to align to an individual intent to satisfy that, that query. So in this case, you can see we've defined you know, a whole range of potential utterances for that slot alone, that, that query alone, sorry. And we've also defined a bunch of potential slots. So for example, cabin baggage, maybe posed as handbag, bags, cabin bags, cabin luggage, baggage, wheelies, carry-on, luggage, and so on and so forth. And also in this definition, we've chosen to not restrict it. So if there's another term that Lex has learned of outside of ourselves, we'll allow that to come in as part of an expanded value within this slot. So with those two things now, ideally we've captured possible combinations to drive us into the correct intent around cabin baggage type D in this case. And again, the reason we operated this manner was that under A-B testing, our users didn't want to be asked three or four questions to get to their initial response. Simple question, simple response. 
So if we demo that. So this is an open Twitter account called Unicorn Flights. We use it to provide demos. I'm going to ask some simple queries here. Let's start with how do I check in. Success. So we provided that text in English specific to uh, how do we check in. And again, we have our feedback here. Am I happy with the response? Yes or no? And I say, yes, I'm happy. Let's move on. Let's ask something else. OK, let's go with another question. So this time, what is my luggage allowance? And we pull back our luggage allowance. And again, that could be asked in a whole heap of different ways, using different terms for the word luggage, using different terms for the word allowance, based on the battery of slot values we've allowed for this. Let's go again. OK, more serious one. Great. You'll notice as well that on the feedback, we keep randomizing the verbiage we use. So mono responses are great for UI in terms of visual components, but terrible for speech and interaction. You want to make it feel more human to provide randomized versions of the responses, especially when it's part of a, a joining conversation or joining term. We'll do one more. As a parent, can I bring a buggy? And success. So we have some details around baby travel. So then moving on, we want our experience to so I, I'm from Ireland, so I'm in Europe. So we have multiple languages across Europe. I deal with some of our clients. Indeed, they work in different countries. So we wanted to provide a pure, you know, single interface, but multilingual experience. And as Harsha pointed out, we use Comprehend and Translate to facilitate that. So how does it work? So first of all, our Lex AI is written, built, trained, and tested in English. So let's leave it in English. You know, we have confidence in that model. So using an interface like Twitter, or Facebook, or Skype, or Slack, we'll use Comprehend to determine what the ingress language was, what language did the person ask the question in. And so now we know what our ingress language is. We can translate that to English, and we know what our target response language needs to be. So we'll take a Spanish term. How do I check in? We'll translate it to the English term. How do I check in? We'll give that to Lex. Lex will resolve that with the, the function, the feature, the data, the response required. And in our case, we won't use translate to produce the response. We actually use our own native versions of the language. There's a few reasons for that. One is that it means that we have full control of any of the language nuances, which may be you know, locale specific, a little bit slang, you know, but also in terms of dealing with Europe, we want to deal with different um, legal entities in different countries or different legal terms in different countries. So in the travel industry, the actions around a cancelled flight may be different in Italy than they are in Slovakia. Yes, which will allow for those things. So the content itself is different. So let's. Let's try some Spanish. Yeah, I'm going to cheat here. So fantastic. It's detected that I was speaking Spanish. It's resolved it by a lex in English. It's retrieved the Spanish response for it and it's pushed us back. We're dealing with cards, so we understand we're dealing in Spanish, so we'll return the response cards to the user in Spanish as well. Yeah? So that's our multilingual piece. If we move on to how do we keep the bots smart? You know, so in, in the customer services domain, who is the knowledge holder? You know, it's definitely not the developer, right? It's the customer services team lead or the customer services manager, the person who does control 
quality control on the calls and on the messages regularly. So we provide that person with the power to spot check and sample how the AI is doing as it would a human agent and update the responses or realign the responses to the correct intents as they go. So for example, this is a simple interface we have to provide us insights into the data we collect as part of that experience. And we'll filter by time. You might notice some repetition here. We've practiced. What we also add is some additional tooling to help reduce the, the burden on the person spot checking. So we have some defined terms around what makes a good input sent, what makes a good utterance. It's a certain number of words, it's no conjunctive terms, no, it's 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 understood. And we'll just expand one of those one of those uh, utterances. This we, we asked this a moment ago. And then if needs be, based on the, the modeling we do around you know, FAQ response style data in a customer service domain, we can literally just realign you know, this utterance to another intent and propose as a correction. So what does that mean? It means that the customer service agent has the ability to go in and spot check and sample the AI's behavior to dictate what the AI should have aligned that, spoke, that, that utterance to and pass it on to workflow for somebody else to approve it. So we reduce the risk of the human having a bad day and making the AI less intelligent. So you know, we double, double check our work. And then we literally mark that as, as a correction. And then the, the second person in the line will come in, look at the approvals, and mark it as, that's fine, go ahead, or no, reject that with a given reason. And we can then have the bot rebuild. So we're removing the need to have a large development cycle to come in to take notes of what worked or didn't work. You know, we're doing it in, in almost real time, but we're using real data to make the AI smarter. So then finally, what happens when it doesn't work? What happens when there's an awkward customer like myself? If you recall at the start of the, con of the presentation, we had a longer flow in terms of providing contextual support. So let's say, how do I check in again? OK, so whether I'm unhappy with how do I check in's response because it's wrong or because I'm unhappy is almost irrelevant. I'll say, no, I'm not happy. So we feed this on to the next stage of the AI. Nope. Hang on. OK. So it's actually pushed through, but what it's done is it's pulled back the next best terms, next best statements around how do I check in. So I'm going to roll through check in again. Live demos, come on. Let's go again. OK, so it's pull back check-in related topics, which is correct. I'll say, actually, the problem was was having check-in issues. And I'll receive you know, the response for that. Let's say I'm still not happy. And again, it may be just me, right? And at this stage, now we're going to offload to the human. So in our case, the AI understands that this has happened. It needs to back off the conversation and let the humans talk. And similarly, when the humans finish talking, we'll have a fairly well style message, which instructs the AI to engage again for the next query. And that's us. Ciao. Thank you. So we're going to be here for another five minutes if you have any questions. Thank you for attending. Thanks, everybody.